this time on Tween the Wheels. It's my 93 uh, 180SX imported from Japan. Nice. Check that out, pretty awesome, eh? You know, no summer would be complete without coming to Peacher Island, getting up at five in the morning, checking out one of these amazing sunrises. I've been coming here for the last 12 years, getting amazing time lapses, just like this one. You know, it really doesn't matter how many times I come out here, they're always just a little bit different. It's like between the wheels, every vehicle is a different story, slightly different look, it doesn't matter if they're the same type of car, they're all a little bit different, and it's always worth telling the story. This place kind of signifies that. Of course, you can't come out here with a Canadian staple, Tim Hortons Double Double, because that's the good, wholesome Canadian thing to do, and the little synth wave music just to set the mood. So this week on Between the Wheels, we're doing something a little bit different. We're not checking out a American domestic muscle car from the 70s or 80s or even 60s. We're actually gonna go over there at Gatineau side, check out a car from the 90s that's an import from Japan. You know, there's this huge culture in importing Japanese vehicles with right-hand drive. That's right, this is gonna be the first vehicle on the show where the steering wheel is on the wrong side. <laughs> There's a huge culture for this. A lot of you may have heard of the Nissan Skyline. This is something very similar. This vehicle we're gonna be checking out today is a 1993 Nissan 180SX. He's had it for over 10 years. He's done a lot of modifications on it. So we're gonna pop over to Gatineau right now, check out this car and hear his story. All right, so I'm standing here with Pat in Cantley, Quebec. Beautiful area, man. This is this is a really nice spot you got here. Yes, it is. And Definitely. you have a beautiful car. The, yeah. Tell us about this vehicle, man. This is a beauty. So yeah, it's my 93 uh, 180SX, uh, imported from Japan in 2009. Okay. And uh, yeah, I have it since, since then. Obviously, there's a story behind it. We'll get into that story. And there's a reason you had this, and everything happens for a reason. So, exactly. And before we get into that story, let's, let's talk about the engine itself. It comes with a SR20. DET, uh, it's a two liter uh, turbo. S stock it used to have, it's 205 horse uh, at the flywheel. And now currently I'm at 353 at the wheels. It's give or take 400 so at the engine. Double the amount that they used. And this is a rear wheel drive? Rear wheel drive. Okay, so, exactly. <laughs> so you can do some nice burnouts. Yeah, in this thing. yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> and you it have does. really nice tires to, to complement that. <laughs> so you've done a lot here. What did you do in this engine? Because I'm looking in here. And, and, and it's pretty unique. I can see definitely, what, what did you do to the engine to, to get to this point? Uh, well, a, a few years back, I, I blown the engine. I, I cracked a, a piston in it. Oh no. I took it out, 
uh, strip it down, bring it to the to the speed shop. You strip it down yourself? Yeah. Wow. So exactly. you get the whole engine apart. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so while he was uh, rebuilding it with the uh, forged pistons and and okay. the, the whole kit, I repaint the the engine, uh, the engine bay. Uh, when I get the engine back, I repaint the the, uh, yeah, all when, the engine. When yeah. it's out, you might as well. And it looks really clean. Like you did a great yes, job is. in here. Well, I, this I, is I, awesome. I can't even tell. I, you know, if had you not told me. I wouldn't have known that these are different. Like I can only see maybe uh, in the uh, texture a little exactly, bit, but exactly. the color is right on. Like you Just did a great a job. Yeah. Just a little. Fantastic. Yeah, it's really nice. Spent a lot of hours working on it, but it was the. Uh, it's like a therapy. Yeah. You know, it's 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 good for the soul and. Yeah, man. And good for the soul. It's uh, enjoyable. You got a really nice shop there, so you, it helps. It helps. It yeah. helps. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So what is going on over here? Like, what is this madness here? I see you got some aluminum welding uh, going on here. In, Intercooler piping. Okay. And it's the um, mass airflow uh, okay. sensor. It usually it's at the uh, intake near the air filter. Yeah, I've never seen it there before. The guy that uh, uh, at, at the speed shop yeah. um, really knows the, the these engine. Um, so he recommended and putting he build it there his own box okay. to put the sensor in it. Uh, and oh, so it's, it's custom built? Custom built, exactly. Okay. With the CNC, with al aluminum block, and he put the sensor in it, and it's it's um, much easier to read closer to the throttle body. So, so I was going to say, reading uh, closer is one of the advantages. What What is another advantage of doing this? Uh, apart from, from a better reading, yeah. uh, um, more accurate reading. Um, not much? Not, not much. It's a uh, 300ZX. Uh, MAF sensor, okay. so it's not the MAF sensor from the SR20, it's a bigger one, uh, so they can calculate more flow, right. uh, so you can run higher boost then. Okay, I was going to ask, power. so what's the what's the advantage of, of having a better reading? To be more okay. safer with the tune. Okay, exactly. so more for tuning, so so you get um, readings that are more accurate and you get better tuning, which gives you more performance. And more, more re reliability. Mm -hmm. Got yeah. it, really nice. And um, what else did you do in the engine here? Because it does look, it looks really clean. It's a beautiful I, I, I try to keep it as OEM as I, possible. Okay. Uh, so anybody can open the hood and... and still see the original still engine. Still see, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, you didn't mess around with the whole engine too much, uh, right? Well, it's forged forge pistons, uh, middle head, head gasket. Okay. Uh, oh, forged pistons. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. right on. Uh, Wise Echo pi pistons. Very nice. Put some uh, HKS cam in it, so it's stage two cams. So it brings a nice uh, idle to it. Okay, so uh, the, the camshaft change is what gives you that nice idle. The blah, 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 blah. Yeah, definitely, okay. definitely. Like, like the V8s, but it's, it's a force. You know what's really funny that I just noticed that's really throwing me off? Is seeing the, the brake booster on this side. On this like, side. I, I'm used to seeing it on that side. I'm like, what the hell is it doing here? But this is right hand drive. Exactly. So your steering wheel is on the right hand. And what's that like driving <laughs> something like this? The, the first, first times were. Uh, were uh, special. It's it's to get centered in the road. Yeah. So usually your eye are is um, focusing on the yellow line. Yeah. To to stay straight in the middle, but you have to focus on the white line on right. the other to to stay to uh, stay straight in the road. Okay. So it takes some time getting used to. Exactly, because yeah. I was I was always in the middle yeah. of the of the the street. And and you'd also drive a truck. So do you find it hard going between the vehicles having Not the... anymore. Not anymore? Okay. Not anymore. In, so the, right in the, the first Yeah, good. exactly. When I bought the, this one, I used to have a uh, I had a 91 uh, Mazda MX-6. Okay. It was a standard too. Yeah. So And this one's well, standard, right? Yeah, a manual transmission, yeah. Okay. So when I was hopping from one to the other, uh, that was a hard time. I, I was always in the door panel trying to look for the shifter. <laughs> um, wipers <laughs> and flashers are yeah. Or uh, swap to. Oh my goodness! Uh, not swap. Uh, yeah, they're in in inverted. Inverted. Yeah, yeah exactly, gotcha. exactly. Uh, so, so it was a bit common wow. that I, I use my wiper to turn left and <laughs> exactly. So but definitely some learning curves, but uh, definitely. But yeah. not. That's not. The, you know, once you like you said, you get used to it. It's you're exactly. good to go. This is really nice. Well, apart from that, the the, the turbo turbo is bigger. Okay. Uh, GT twenty eight seventy six R. So it's a it's a. Big ass turbo down it's there. It's a big ass turbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. We'll see. We'll see what the big ass turbo does when we're driving later on. Right on. <laughs> right on. And any other ch changes or anything else you want to mention um, about the engine? Aluminium radiator, the clutch. Yeah. Um, How many cylinders is this? I never actually. It's a four cylinder. It's a four cylinder. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is an inline four. As and I uh, yeah, see. injectors are bigger. They used to be three thirty three cc's. Okay. Uh, and they are eight fifties now. Okay. So, so, so uh, you have changed a lot. You changed injectors. And, uh, uh, math sensor, turbo, camshaft, pistons, piston, so a lot pump, of uh, fuel pump too. Yeah, yeah, fuel pump's bigger too. Okay, wow. Uh, it's 
time by uh, little by time yeah. uh, every year and uh, yeah very nice. is what made you want to get this car in particular well I always love the 240 SX okay there, there's the Canadian model since since I'm this high always love them went to get a GTR Skyline GTR yes but oh, the Skyline, day yes. before I went to the GDM shop in Montreal uh, it was sold so they had a Skyline in Montreal, and you no, went no. to go get it. Exactly. And they sold it the day before. The day the before. Day oh, that's that's brutal, the man. The day before. So but anyway, I'll, I'll I'll go anyway. Take a look at them. Right. And she was standing in a corner, uh, in the dark, all by herself. So uh, she was waiting there. And how many kilometers did she have on it? Do you remember roughly? Seventy-two. Seventy-two. Okay. Two thousand. Yeah. And, and how many do you have on it right now? Uh, One hundred and fifty. Okay. One hundred and fifty-two. So you've driven it about twice the amount it had Exactly, originally. exactly. So, so you've been enjoying it. And what is so unique about these vehicles? Like a lot of people like the Skylines, right? Definitely. That, that's, that's the thing a lot of people, the right-hand drive. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And this, this is a big thing. Why are people going for these right-hand drive Nissans? Well, at the times they were cheap okay. and rel reliable for the, the, the price that you pay for. Right. And they're unique. Right. It's, it's, it's real different on, on what we can get here. And J Japanese vehicles are, are known, especially at that time period, very reliable. Mm -hmm. like, like you can really beat the crap out of these things. Not that you have to. <laughs> no, no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I wouldn't expect uh, you to. It's a really nice car, but I, I know the, the Japanese cars now, the Nissan isn't as great as it was before maybe. But in the 90s, it was really well known. And let's get back to the Skyline. So what made you want to get a Skyline first? Well, it's the icon, uh, iconic. It's the, the unicorn of, of, of the... The unicorn? Yeah, <laughs> the unicorn of the, the Japanese, uh, That's Japanese market. Really hard to find. Yeah, That's right. well, as I was saying, I always loved the, the 240SX here. Okay. And when I saw her, I completely fell in love with her. She was bone stock, stock suspension, stock exhaust, stock wheels. Nobody touched it. Nobody paid much attention to it. Uh, went to the other shop. There, there was uh, four or five shops in, in Montreal at, at that time. My mind was always coming back to, to this one. Okay. So. Uh, and what brought you back to this one? What, what, what was it that was dragging you? Like, it was pulling the, you back uh, to it? That nobody touched it. It's, it was OEM. Okay. Um, so nobody beat the shit out of it. So no. you had the opportunity of having a pretty low mileage vehicle because 70,000 is, is relatively low mileage in general and for a car like this it's pretty low because these if, engines can go pretty long. If, if you if you take care of them. If you take care of them. <laughs> right. So it, you wanted stock and you wanted to put your own personal touch. And, and how was that story? Like how did it come about that you started working on the car? Well, it, we, we start by little things. I, I um, did a, a, the exhaust system. So you want to hear the little rumble. Yeah. Uh, it was a bit high, so with this uh, coilover suspension on it, right. uh, wheels, you know, slowly. So you just started one thing at a time and started going into. You didn't? Did you plan to do all this stuff? Like, did no, you... no, no. I, I saw a deal for the for some wheels and the coilovers, yeah. so I jumped on it. Yeah. Uh, rebuild the coil the coilovers because they were uh, noisy. Right. And uh, the, the we didn't talk about the rims earlier. Are those the stock rims that came on it? Probably not. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm the the um, a bit bigger. Those are 16s. These used to come 15s. They not exactly, back exactly, okay. exactly, exactly. So, so you're able to put 16s on here. And they they, I bought them the first second year. Right. And they are on it since uh, since then. And these are slicks. These are slicks, eh? The uh, semi slicks. The same as yeah, slicks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. It's it's the the. The middle ground. Mi middle between slicks and, and street, uh, street tires. Very cool. Okay. Nice. Well, I, I rode it for a few years, enjoyed it as, as much as I can, went to Quebec with it and Montreal. And I was doing something like a, uh, 20Ks by summer with it. Okay. Uh, in, in the first year. In the first year, you did 20,000? Yeah, exactly. Because I really okay. enjoyed it. And That's a lot for, for an older car. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people just keep them in the garage and exactly. wipe them with a diaper. <laughs> exactly. But I really drove, drove it. So you used the car for what it was designed for? Yeah. Me and my buddies, we, the, a lot of my friends used to have those. We were like uh, 10 or 12. I have uh, a like that. Okay, so the group of friends, you guys all went together, you went to the drift events. Exactly, Those exactly. Are great memories. I, I didn't drift it because right. uh, I was uh, uh, too much respect. Yeah, you were yeah, a little yeah. more responsible, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, that's cool, like, I uh, can understand that. But it was really nice to, to be part of it and, and right. you know, live it. Well, you know what? I'm really excited looking at this thing. I can't wait to go for a ride. I've never been in a car no? that's right hand drive. So, and I have never been in this type of vehicle before, so let's, let's go do that. Definitely, for sure.
<laughs> that is a lot of power. Yeah, it's nice. That is nice. <laughs> yeah, that is. It's nice to have that power and still be able to, yeah. you know, drive it. I can't believe how much you're able to stay in control when you have that much power. On a rear-wheel drive car, is that the tires, the suspension that do that? Exactly, what? exactly. And it's a uh, uh, semi-slicks. Okay. So it really helps for the traction. Right. But they wear off uh, they wear faster. Off. All right. Very comfortable. I love it. It's like uh, sitting in the couches in the 90s. I like it. I feel like I should have an N64 controller. <laughs> it's great. Place like a golden eye. It's a nice fun drive and you got some gauges here too. You got your oil gauge and your water gauge. It's always important to know your oil pressure. And, right. But with the, the this gauge here, I can really see how inaccurate that was. Inaccurate yeah. it is. Exactly. You never really know with those gauges. I guess there's nothing better than having a solid number. And it's not a needle. Yeah. It's it's uh, digital, so right. I know exactly right. what's what's the, the uh, water temperature. Exactly what's the oil pressure. Right. Well, yeah, and then you have these vehicles, you put all this work in, and I'm bad for this. My Cherokee has no working gauges other than this. <laughs> so I have no, if I have any sort of problem, I'm screwed. And you have these vehicles where you put all this work in. Exactly. And you're essentially fucked because you don't know what's going on. So it's smart of you to put all this kind of stuff on. Yeah. And then you have two more gauges there. What do you got? Uh, Air fuel ratio? Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's really important to work with that boost. Okay. Uh, but how does that work? Like, what what is the number telling? It's the uh, there's a it's like an O2 sensor, so it, it can calculate the amount of oxygen or uh, of fuel, unburned fuel in the exhaust system. Right. The higher the numbers, the leaner the engine is running. Okay, I see. Uh, too lean, you'll you'll blow it will overheat and you'll blow the engine. Okay, so you got to keep your eye on that. When you're, you're playing around with it. Like... If you're playing around with it, yeah, got exactly. It. So. You've had this car for 13 years, you've done a lot of work to it, and there's not many of these around. How does it feel driving this in 2022? Oh, it's uh, it's nice because it's it's well the, the same drive as it was uh, yeah. 10, 13 years ago, you know? Right. It's a throwback. It's exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. As I was saying, it's like a, a therapy. Yeah. So it, it, you really clear off your mind. Yeah. You, you haven't stopped smiling since we started driving. Right. So. <laughs> well, I think that makes sense, right? When I was younger, I, I used to uh, jump around when, when I saw a cool car, and you know, oh yeah. And, and now people jump around to look at my car. I, I think that's awesome because when you're a kid growing up and you see something cool, oh, and then you know that's what you want. You never know what kind of effect it's gonna have on. I can't believe you're pushing. 400 horsepower on a four-cylinder, that's crazy. Four -cylinder. Yeah, wow. Yeah, exactly. That is a, you no, know, it's not a big car, so. It's not a big it car. It moves fast. It's really moves, yeah, Holy exactly. Cow. I want to go back to the uh, dragway yeah. and, and give it a try to see what she can do. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you this. Of all the people that have been on the show so far, to date, this has been the fastest car I've really, ever really? Yeah, Absolutely, when you put the hammer down, so. Uh, not that I'm challenging everybody to go as fast <laughs> as they can. But challenge is on. I don't need to die, but the challenge is on, that's fine. I didn't say it needed, so <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Definitely. <laughs>
I don't Definitely. know if I got There we go. <laughs> right on. Thanks for being on the show, man. That was it's my freaking pleasure. awesome, dude. That, thanks for bringing me back to the rawness of, uh, of enjoying of cars. The 90s, uh, yeah. <laughs> the 90s, yeah. 90s shitbox. 90s <laughs> shitbox, yeah, not so much. Yeah. Next time on Between the Wheels. The 1994 Audi S4. It may look like a grandpa's sedan, but under the hood, it's packed with legendary mechanical masterpieces. This is my childhood dream. And it would eventually come true and create some amazing memories. Unfortunately, for the last eight years, it's been parked, sitting outside, rotting away with no end in sight. And I have no earthly idea what to do with it. So in order to figure it out, I'm gonna need your help to help me decide on what to do next.